When you go to churches now, especially non-denominational churches, the big ones, they have hundreds of people on staff, hundreds, yep. not including the hundreds of volunteers that we would argue is almost slave labor. You said something a minute ago I don't want to miss. You said you got all those volunteers doing this work and we would call that slave labor. I agree, but I want to want to hear a little bit more about that. What have you seen when it comes to work done by volunteers, volunteer exploitation? Um, what mm -hmm. you know, the average amount of hours you're seeing people work? Like, just just talk about what you guys have seen as far as volunteers go. Yeah, that's probably been our our biggest. We we've had thousands of messages across our social chat platforms, and we've heard from multiple hundreds of people that volunteers, there's no, there's no like time limit on volunteers, mm -hmm. you know, so you could be working these volunteers for 10 or 12 hours a day. Um, yeah. I was just at a church in Washington where they had, they had six red cameras operating all on all using volunteer operators. They had five still camera photographers, uh, mm -hmm. volunteers. They had jib operator volunteers and I, and I'm a film guy. Like I know what it takes to operate that jib. Yeah. And I sat right next to this operator. He had no, he almost took people's heads off multiple times with this, with this 200 pound crane. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that is an OSHA violation. And like that church could be sued if that thing hit anybody in the back of the head, but they don't care. And you just look at the scope of volunteers and especially volunteer if he's burnout, operating that jib for six services that weekend. For sure. And so, but here's the bigger kicker that I've seen and we've seen across multiple, this goes to the associations and conventions of churches. A lot of churches are starting universities mm -hmm. or seminaries. Yep. And that seminary is a church, which it's not. It's a, it should be registered as a nonprofit filing 990s, but it is now an association of a church. So a lot of these churches are forcing their volunteers that if you ever want to get a job with us, you need to go to our university. You need to mm -hmm. pay our tuition. And at the same time, we're going to demand 10% of tithing to the church. And if you don't, There's if a, you go below 10%, you're fired on the spot. Yeah. And so, so these churches are, and people do not like this, but they are the epitome of authoritarianism. They, they demand you tithe. They demand you give hours. And then there's just no accountability up that hierarchical chain. And mm -hmm. so like we, we did a, we did a post yesterday um, with a brilliant, he's, his name's Peter Clark. Um, it's from a podcast that's dropping tomorrow. He's been working in the nonprofit sector globally for uh, about 40 years. Mm. He's a PhD from Harvard. He was like on the front lines of the AIDS crisis in Africa. And, and like, he is, he is an expert at strategy deployment in, in over 150 countries in the U S in the, in the world. And he goes, Oh yeah. Nonprofits, are structured like socialist governments mm. because they take in revenues and then they say, we know how, how to allocate the revenues better than you. Just trust us. The amount of hate we've gotten off that post mm. is mind boggling. And, and I responded to a couple of people going like, have you spent time in socialist or communist countries? Cause this guy's spent 40 years. Yeah. So maybe instead of getting offended, you should say, Ooh, we should look at the structure yeah. of this. And so volunteers are, are, um, are the, it's, it sickens me because Chris, let's talk about that, uh, that Christmas special. Yeah. I, I wanted to bring that up. So you don't have to like, uh, so we're, we're, we're at a place with the environment that we created, the community we created where a lot of people are divulging a lot of information, but just going to a church, you don't need to look too far. So yeah. here in North Texas, a massive mega church put on this, Christmas show and it was all over the internet I know all what over you're talking about. Viral, right the angels flying from the sky right it looked like yep. the sermon on the mount right like the way the production was I'm kidding of course not and uh <laughs> and, and so the average ticket price was north of 50 bucks and hey, hey, let's just talk about that w when did churches start charging people for tickets oh, yeah. to get into events come on 100 percent so you got all that revenue coming in and 90 plus percent 
they were all volunteers. They, I forgot yeah. the number of volunteers. It was something astronomical. It was well over a hundred. Yeah. I was, I was, I paid that 50 bucks to go. I, I, I was, <laughs> I wanted to, I want, well, actually I didn't, I was in Texas ironically, like, and at, at that time she, and my dad's like, Hey, we got an extra ticket. And I'm like, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so it was 12 and they were proud. The pastor got up on stage after this event. And I mean, like they had, they had Santa Claus in his sled flying over our heads and it was the most, it was the most incredible. I've been to Broadway. I've been to Cirque du Soleil. That thing, that thing was better than Cirque du Soleil in Vegas from a, from a wow. production standpoint. And then he gets on stage and he goes, we had 1200 volunteers to pull this off. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so you have huge cash revenues. You have literal slave labor, like a base of volunteers mm -hmm. and that, that produce this whole thing. I would love to know if they're paying you bit on that, which is, this is what the show gets into something called unrelated business income tax that mm -hmm. churches have to pay or should be paying if it's unrelated business income tax. That is the definition of you bit. Mm -hmm. I would put money on it that that church did not pay taxes on those ticket sales. Because they don't have to report it. They it's don't have to good. report it. Yep. And so if the, like, They'll call yeah, it a but, service, right, of some sort, or you know. but but so look at I'm in production. They'll say Chris it's related because production. they shared the gospel at that event. But I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, man. I, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say this as a pastor. There is no way Jesus would have been behind making people pay money to come into an event. So, yeah. I mean, if, if I, I'm gonna I'm gonna piss some people off with this, but that's fine. If you go to a church that's doing something like that, if you go to a church that's charging people to come to anything. Um, like that, it, go to a different church. There's something wrong. I, you you guys don't feel comfortable probably saying that, but I feel comfortable saying that. Go to a different church. That's not okay. Well, look at but but as a, as a producer and as someone who produces shows, I see the value in that, and I see the cost it takes to pull off a Cirque du Soleil and the overhead. And why? Because mm -hmm. they have they have the best in the business running those cameras, running yeah. those safety protocols creating this, this, this epic production. Those churches are production companies now yeah. producing events on the level of Hollywood. But I guarantee you, they don't have the safety requirements. Hollywood mm -hmm. does. <laughs> they don't have the professional staff because they're not paying them. Yeah. And so like it is what, what, what our conclusion is, is if you really want to create a profitable, the most profitable business you can start a church. Yeah. Well, like, and, and that's the issue too, church, because churches that are that big, not all churches have big cash reserves. Um, but we, you know, we did a project on, um, you know, miracle offerings and we looked at the miracle offerings the churches do just at the end of the year, your biggest churches that can afford to do these things often have ridiculous cash reserves, millions upon millions in cash reserves. So if you're charging tickets, you're not having to dive into any of that. So that money is mm -hmm. there, but now we're charging people, you know, and, and again, it, it's what you're talking about. They're not being a church in that moment. They're being a production company versus being a church that mm -hmm. hires a production company to come in and do that. Right. And if that's the case, I could see like charging for the tickets. Hey, we had to hire a production company to help us make this thing happen that, that we really believe is going to connect with people. Um, man, it just doesn't sit well with me. Maybe it's a personal thing. It doesn't sit well with me, well with me when we are charging people to hear the gospel, um, which I know is at the well, end of the day, the drum to, they're going to bang. You know, we got to separate the two. Yeah. What is Christ's church? And then what is this we've created? Yeah. And if we can, if we can separate those, we've done, we've done our job. Yeah.